Welcome to Honest Conversations, hosted and produced by Olga Nesterova. This is the show for go-getters and entrepreneurs. Whether you are an aspiring entrepreneur, a startup founder, or a successful business owner, together we will learn, we will explore, and get inspired. In this episode, we feature Wayne Sutton, the founder of Neuropersuasion Success Coaching. Welcome to Honest Conversations. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Honest Conversations. My name is Olga Nesterova, and I'm the founder of Honest Business and Honest TV. I'm super excited about today's episode. We are welcoming the absolute superstar when it comes to persuasion, influence, and building the ultimate connection to each other. Wayne Sutton is the creator and founder of Neuropersuasion Success Coaching. He will teach us about connecting. He will teach us about us and how we can influence ourselves and each other in a positive way. Let's start the show. Hi, Wayne. Welcome to the show. I'm so honored to have you with us here today. Well, I'm excited to be here. Look forward to sharing and just, yeah, having a great time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I truly love what you do and more, more specifically how you do what you do, because there's a lot of coaches and a lot of motivation, but your coaching has so much substance. So how did you actually get into doing what you're doing and the way you're doing it? <laughs> yeah, well, the way I got into it was absolute, um, absolute need. I was in sales. I was out door to door selling insurance policies. And for anybody that's ever gone door to door, it's a tough way to make a living. But it was secede or go hungry, mm-hmm. and I had to secede. Mm-hmm. So I had to learn quickly. Okay, this person did help me. This one bought from me. This one shut the door in my face. What did I do? And I had to stop blaming others and start looking at myself. And then I got where I could actually make money and I could live. But there was something more. And that something more was I wanted to help other people in their life. And so I started a study of temperament therapy, hypnosis and Mm. Christian counseling and really just delved into that area and realized, hey, it's the same. All of this all goes back to the way we're created, the way our mind works. So from absolute necessity to desire to help somebody else and then like, hey, how can I share this with other people? So that's kind of where it all formulated over the last few decades. See, and that makes sense because when I listen to you and you have this amazing podcast, it feels like you're getting us. You're getting me or you're getting your audience. And that is just because you actually studied us. That makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) And because I am you, I'm everybody. I mean, we're all connected. We all have our own struggles and trials and and we're looking somebody that can help us, somebody that can take us to the next level. And so uh, studying how people work, including Mm -hmm. the man or the woman in the mirror, I think is the most important thing we can do. Absolutely. And people often forget that sales is actually people selling to people, people helping others, right? By providing services or, um, you know, any products or whatnot. But um, when did you decide and just if you can just kind of have this little throwback and describe how did you decide to create your own company, to dedicate your life to helping others? What was that moment that helped you to make that decision? Uh, I think there was a number of moments. Um, I grew up with a father who was an entrepreneur at heart and he worked and he studied and he, he, he built a business, um, but he never got to the level he wanted it to be. And I saw him, I saw his struggle, I saw his trials and I thought, I love this. And then when I went into the workforce, um, I realized, wow, um, maybe it's just in my DNA. Maybe I was unconsciously just programmed from seeing my father be an entrepreneur. I want to go out there and do it my way. And I've always had this belief, oh, if one person can do it, someone else can do it. You know, um, I, I really think I picked that up from Tony Robbins, just modeling their behavior and their beliefs. But then I also picked it up from, um, I mentioned earlier, I believe, you know, my, my study in Christian counseling, it said that the Bible says that God is no respecter of person. So if I can do it, somebody else can do it. And I thought, why don't I go do it the way it should be done? Mm-hmm. I, I was, and and I, mean, I don't mean this wrong, but there's a lot, as you said earlier, there's a lot of coaches, there's a lot of courses, and it seemed like the same rehash material. Mm-hmm. And I said, how can we do something that's really going to be unique and different and going to make change like that? That's what we're looking for. 
Absolutely. And you mentioned a lot. And with social media, I understand it's um, a lot of positive came with that, right? I mean, we're talking, we're connecting, right? It's also part of that media universe. But a lot of people are using words, misusing words, a lot of people talking about being a brand, owning a brand, and also being a social media influencer. Yeah. And you, as somebody who actually studied how to influence people or ourselves, um, you know, how did you uh, or when did you realize the power of influence? And for everybody who is listening or watching, we're talking actually about actual influence, not social media posts and kind of like, you know, sassy pictures. So um, when did you realize that's something that can help us regardless to what we're doing? I think I think well before social media, well before influencers, you know, understand I'm almost 50 years old. So I grew up without social media. We moved into social media, but I realized even before social media that people made decisions and a friend of mine, a very wise statement, he said, people make and remake decisions every day. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, people can be influenced one way that can be influenced another. And I saw that inside of just where I grew up, my family, my friends, I saw it in religion. And I thought there has to be a way of influencing people for good. And I, I, I mean, at 13 years old, I started a mail order company. Uh, I was running ads in the tabloids. And it was just like, I'd, I'd, make, I'd spend $500 and make $10. I was losing money, mm. but I knew there was a way. It had to work. Mm. So then I started studying hypnosis out of curiosity. But I went to a hypnotist, uh, a hypnosis show, and I thought, this is fake. This is maybe it's real, maybe it's fake. But I saw the technique. Some of the things I'd studied, I saw him doing. I'm like, oh, I know what he's doing here. And afterwards, I grabbed the hypnotist off the stage and I said, why does this work? How does this work? And he gave me some pointers, but it really started a journey. Not that you can hypnotize somebody to make them stop smoking or, yeah. Cluck like a chicken mm -hmm. or something funny. Mm -hmm. But how, mm -hmm. why does the mind even take the suggestions and go with it? Mm -hmm. Why do people, you know, in the, in the world we're living in today, why are some people absolutely, let's, let's look at COVID, they're so pro vaccination and some are so against it. Right. I could break that down and tell you why, but there's reasons why. And the problem is, once somebody starts on that journey of either side, mm -hmm. Usually, confirmation bias kicks in and they stay that way and it alienates us instead of brings us together where we can mm -hmm. actually find solutions. Mm -hmm. So influence is more than I can help you sell more products. It's really about learning how to communicate and have great connections with everybody. Mm -hmm. Great as your podcast, great conversations that lead to great communicate that lead to great relationships. Right. And you know, I think uh, whether we like it or we dislike it, and we're not talking about politics here, but if we think about the past three years and everything that happened, it was completely based on the power of influence, power of persuasion, power so, of reaching out to people, whether it is authentic or not. But there was a certain way, and I'm sure there was a plan on how to do all of this, right? So absolutely. perhaps you as a professional, you see like, okay, I see oh, the signs. Okay. I see it. I see it. So I remember, and again, not to get political, but even if you go back to Donald, Obama. Let's go to Obama. Yeah, yeah. I saw some of the statements, some of the language, some of the body language he was using, um, something called gestural hemispheric track. Mm -hmm. And I saw him do that. And I thought, oh, he's good. He's been trained. Then came Donald Trump. And Donald Trump came different, but still a lot of persuasiveness in him and things that he did. And we can break that down. And then we go into the Biden administration, and I don't see the persuasiveness as much from Biden, but I see it in the parties, in the media. Yeah, we can say, wow, and it divides us. It's just a great divider, not a uniter. And that's mm -hmm. where we've got to overcome. We have to be uniters, and that's how you help people. That's right. how you really, really live a life and go, I live a life of purpose. And mm -hmm. um, but you know, that's why my whole thing about neuropersuasion is learn to influence yourself first and learn how you're being influenced. Then you can influence other people and mm -hmm. then you can impact the world. 
Right. And I think understanding that there are actually tools is very important because in sales, we know there is, you know, sales and discounts and whatever. And that's very obvious. But when it goes to uh, public speaking or somebody having a brand or representing a brand, they're using tools that are not perhaps that visible. And um, I did a little homework and you mentioned that you have those five special words that we can use to influence ourselves and others. So if you mind sharing a little bit. Okay, so we're going to give away a big part of the kingdom here, right? So the five magic words, really everything is based around, if you think about this, in fact, I want everybody watching this, listening to this, I want you to think about something that's really, really important to you. Even the reason that you maybe even are listening or watching to this now. What's important to you about your life? What's important to you about your business? What's important to you? And I want you to hold that thought for just a moment. And I really want you, whatever it's, if it's somebody, if it's a place, if it's a feeling, I just want you to hold it. I want you to amplify it. I want you to let it get bigger and bigger and, and just really feel that emotion. And then I want you to really connect that emotion to your purpose and your day. And I want you to ask yourself, why is that important? And if you really even followed that for just a second there, you felt something. Yes? Mm-hmm. You may be even feeling it now. That feeling right there is called elicitation. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we elicit emotions in people. And we then either connect it to our cause, ourself, or what we're trying to accomplish. Or, and this is also real important, we direct it away and we help the person. That's, if we're using it for therapy, we can direct. If we're using it for persuasion and sales and marketing, we just connect it to us, our product and service. So the five magic words are really simple. If you get into rapport with somebody, you really get a time to talk with somebody. And it's what's important to you about. Mm-hmm. That's it. So for example, when I'm in, when I met my wife, I, I, she was, it's really a funny story, but she was not interested in dating me. Oh. I don't know why. I mean, everybody, <laughs> makes me, but she was like, Wayne, but we, you know, she was not, Hey, and I finally convinced her to just having dinner. And she was so clear. Okay. But it's not a date. I'm like, of course not. Just dinner. Um, but in our conversation, I was able to ask her, what's important? I'm curious. And if people were at those two words down, I'm curious. I'm curious is the universal way to ask almost anything, number one. Number two, if you are genuinely curious, and it really, really allows a lowering of resistance. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I said, hey, I, love you. I understand you're not looking to date someone. You're not looking a boyfriend. I can respect that. But I am curious What's important to you in a relationship? And that started about a 45-minute conversation. Mm-hmm. Now, Olga, there's there's two other layers. You can't just ask somebody what's important. There's two other layers I took her down um, in the conversation. And at the end, I, can, I remember her looking up. Her physiology changed. Mm-hmm. And she gave me two words. Now, I hold those here. Nobody hears those two words because they're the core of my wife's heart. And I've had to ask myself, am I that person? Can I give her these core value needs that she didn't even realize five minutes ago was important to her? She, first time she revealed, she revealed it when she discovered it. But guess who she discovered it in front of? Me. Mm -hmm. So there was a conscious, unconscious anchor then all I have to do is live out those two words. So this is where ethics and morality come in. If I can truly ethically live that out, and that's why we have a great, we've been married 14 years. We mm-hmm. have a great marriage. And because I know what's important to her, she knows what's important to me. And we live that as a lifestyle, not as manipulation. Mm-hmm. So that was a long answer. I hope that helped us. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. Absolutely. And, you know, it reminded me on those um, questions that were so popular, I think, a couple of years ago, the hundred questions you need to ask each other on a date yeah. that will kind of uh, like, but um, I know, especially here in the U.S., we're so famous to, um, you know, make commercial out of anything, pretty much. But um, I think what you just described, having that moment of realization and also um, connecting that to you being yeah. there. It's so important. And I think when it goes to business or anything, right, um, helping people to discover what they need 
or how you can help them. And you perhaps are the first person to even ask and genuinely to be interested about it. You know, um, it creates that special connection. That's what is actually influence and marketing or whatever. Yes. It's for. Absolutely. It, it can be used for anything. So what's important to you is just five words. You can change those words around. You don't have to use that statement. There's even statements instead of questions that will evoke elicitation. But the key is to get beyond the surface level. Mm -hmm. Get beyond what is their first answer because mm -hmm. it's usually programmed. We just repeat. Mm -hmm. you get into that deep level, usually about three levels deep, is when you see physiology change. Right. Deep breaths, eye shifts, because when people are shifting their eyes, they're accessing parts of the brain that they normally don't. Mm -hmm. uh, or that's different for that moment. And then when they speak, listen to their tonality. But so many times, Olga, I've heard people just release for the first time with tears, many times with tears. And then you realize if you can help that person or not. But you build a bond that nobody else mm -hmm. has built. That is so key, especially with loved ones, family, spouse, etc. So it's not all about how can I make more money? We mm -hmm. can definitely help you with that. Mm -hmm. How do I build a better relationship? So. Right. And I think, you know, those people who do um, concentrate on the ultimate result, whether it is making money or be famous or whatever, have followers, likes, whatever, um, never understand why they would, you know, want to achieve that and therefore will never know how to do that. So I really appreciate the substance. And that's exactly what I mentioned from the beginning. You get us to the place where we actually start thinking, yes. which is so rare these days. You know, <laughs> we're just consuming information. And um, so uh, from the perspective of science, and I understand you did a thorough research, you studied a lot. So what does happen to people when we talk to them? So if we think about how to influence them in a good way, right? Not to misuse that. But um, how can we work with that? And um, if you can explain what happens to them when we're approaching somebody? Well, I think when we're, when we're asking, when we're talking with someone, having conversations, again, whether it's the statements or the questions or whatever it is, what we're doing we, when we begin to elicit those emotions or we're changing the chemical makeup of the brain. Now, I, I absolutely believe in love, but I do also know when you love someone, when you hug someone, when you have, uh, you know, sexual relationships with someone, whatever it may be, there's different chemicals in the brain that are released. Right. right. This is why we see people that are truly manic depressive or truly depressed. Uh, it's not just, hey, snap out of it. Sometimes there's, there's chemicals that are, you know, it's something the deeper. So when we elicit emotions, when we use conversation that creates an imagination, what it does is release chemicals. So let me give you an example. When I go back to my wife, I'll use her as an example. But when I got into what's important, we kept asking questions. We had dialogue. At the end of this, when her physiology changed, she looked and her body changed. The body was dripping out different chemicals most likely endorphins at that time. Mm -hmm. She felt mm -hmm. that warm. This is what I'm looking for. Endorphins are extremely powerful. Oxytocin was being dripped. Now, that's great because oxytocin is the love hormone. Who was she looking at? Who was she falling in love with? <laughs> even, even if she didn't know it. Now, let's go on the other side of this. If somebody brings up something negative, people are speaking hate, or people bring up bad memories, then cortisol, fear, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And if you get cortisol and adrenaline together, I mm -hmm. call it a famine cocktail. It's not good. Mm -hmm. But there's a time that you may need to bring that up to make people realize, I don't want to be in this place anymore. I want freedom. Mm -hmm. And then you move them over to dopamine, uh, oxytocin, you know, serotonin, there's endorphins. So you just have to recognize everything we say or do will elicit literally um, the scientific term brain juice in through <laughs> non scientific but it really does different chemicals through the mind. So when you recognize that, you can then lead people into the feeling that you want them to have and the feeling that's going to benefit them. It's used all the time in marketing. Like you said in sales, we use discounts and scarcity. But in marketing it's a lot more invisible. That invisible mm -hmm. influence. But yeah. it still attracts or repels people. And that's where 
we can do it every day in our normal conversation as well, though. Absolutely. And we talked about politics. And, you know, I worked at UN or for UN before. So fear and we're talking about, right, releasing the hormones and cortisol and just that yeah. stage of fear is also used as a way to manipulate people or influence them. So um, and I think that is also used in sales as well. You know, use the sale, but if you don't do it today, tomorrow, it's going to be away. Right. So you use that cocktail, the mixture of kind of like the kindness and the yeah. fear attached to it. So uh, it, that's what those pretty much uh, methods are based on. Right. It is. And if you really look at, let's look at it. Uh, I don't care what news channel it is. If you use any news channel that is yeah. using fear as a way to what it happens, you start watching it, you're focused all mm -hmm. of a sudden. If the political slant or the slant is the way you believe, then your confirmation bias kicks in. I knew I was right. This mm -hmm. one's too. And now you've got not only the oxytocin or, or most likely not oxytocin i'm sorry most likely you've got uh, cortisol dripping we got a fear and trying to protect you and adrenaline maybe even but you've also now i was right you got a dopamine hit mm. you probably just dripping at dopamine so you mm. share it on social media three of your friends agree with you you got another dopamine hit and so now you're literally creating an addiction to your belief system right right Yes. And, and it's just, you know, we can talk about it all day, but I think also when you think about food, there were people use like all sorts of taste buds, you touch everybody's taste buds, you know, and you create that cocktail that's so addictive. And I guess that's what it is on another level, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Oh my goodness. Okay. And then <laughs> I know when I'm watching any kind of news and I try to watch all parts, you know, I'm from Europe, so I'm destined to kind of like consume all sorts of things and then make my own opinion, right? But everything just screams fear. And yeah. I say that, you know, I better not have any snack or any food next to me because it's going to be gone right away because I'm <laughs> so scared. You know? So that, yeah. was, you know, that was the pandemic situation. Um, but, you know, a lot of uh, startup entrepreneurs and uh, startup founders who are listening to this podcast or watching, they're always asking, how can I become more confident? Because mm -hmm. they want to sell on social media, they want to build a brand, but they're not really confident speaking. So is there perhaps any tool or anything we can use to kind of get that confidence boost or at least understand where we have to work on? Yeah, one of the things, and that's a great question, I'll probably give a different answer than many people do, but I think one of the greatest ways to build confidence is to find confidence inside of what you're accomplishing, not what somebody else has given you praise for. Back to the dopamine hit. If I post something on social media and it gets a lot of hits, I get this little bit of confidence that I was right. One person can say something bad about it, and now all of a sudden I'm not confident. So our unconscious is learning. If people approve of me, I'm confident. If they don't, then I'm not. So we have to break that pattern. I do it by limiting and what you said earlier, not watching the news. I do watch the news, but I have one source primarily. I watch it for about 10 minutes, get the daily information I need. And then I do something um, really kind of something I learned from Tony Robbins, but I put my own twist on it. And it's a, it's a gratitude and confidence booster. And it really is a, just a morning ritual. And I believe these rituals are so important of really meditating. For me, it's in the shower. For some people it's sitting crisscrossed applesauce or something. I don't know what it is for them, but it's <laughs> anywhere you're comfortable and you focus on one thing, one thing you're grateful for. Now, in the beginning, when you first start doing this, it could be, I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for, you know, you go to these big areas, which you're grateful for. But I always challenge people to find something that's very small. I'm today, I'm grateful for, I'm doing this podcast. Not that it's small, but I'm grateful for water. I'm grateful for my wife. And I, I think of different things that I do one at a time. Mm -hmm. I truly meditate on that. I want my own oxytocin, my own endorphins dripping. So I really want to sit here and just meditate on that deep breath work, listen, meditating on the goodness of that. That primes me. Priming is a powerful technique we, we can talk about maybe later, but priming gets you primed for that day. So it gets you in a mood of gratitude. Also, confidence is recognizing that you have helped and you have the ability to help people 
in my opinion. And I know this because I know I can help many people. But if I can't help someone in one area, I know someone that can because I'm a master of building communication and building relationships. So confidence comes from realizing I either I have the resources or I can be resourceful and get the resources. So that for me is confidence coming in from a place of gratitude because it's hard to be confident when you're in fear and you cannot be in gratitude and fear at the same time. So gratitude is probably the foundation for confidence, in my opinion. Mm. And that is so true. And specifically, we talked about the news and television, but also social media plays a huge role. When you get on any platform of your choosing and then you just scroll and two hours later, you just don't know where, you know, what your name is. So, <laughs> yeah. and is there a way, um, if we don't even talk about business, but is there a way to use um, social media in a healthy manner that will actually give us that confidence, perhaps not follow account? that cause fear or what would you suggest to those who are there and are all involved in their phones? So this is my battle too. So I'm speaking here as a fellow warrior here and not the leader because <laughs> um, I have I have I have come on my phone and literally took off Facebook. Just Ooh, delete it. Okay. Okay. I, I put it back on though because I was like <laughs> oh I need but now in all fairness I do use social media for my business. Mm -hmm. So However, many people use that as an excuse, and then they mm -hmm. there's no business need to, for me to sw you know swap two hours of TikTok videos. There's just no need for it. But how do you do it in a healthy way? I think you do it in a healthy way is to remember what social means. Social media. I want to build connections. So a lot of what I'm doing is how many people today that I look at their videos, like their pictures, but I did not connect with. Mm-hmm. And so I personally try to connect, not just, hey, that was a great post, but really connect with one person a day. Mm -hmm. I don't do it every day, but I try. That's my attempt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to connect with them on a deeper level. I mm -hmm. loved your post. I see you're in Sydney, Australia. How are things going in Australia? How is this happening? What's important to you about? We're going to get into the criteria and that, I think, if we remember, if, if we look at social media as a time suck, it is. If we look at it as a way to connect with people like we're connecting here mm -hmm. and really helping other people, then we give it a purpose. Mm -hmm. Wake up with it. Here's one thing I always tell my daughters. And if you wake up with an agenda, then it doesn't matter what your emotions are. Mm -hmm. Matter if you had mm -hmm. a bad night of sleep. My agenda today is connect with somebody and make it a better world for them. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. do I do that? That's the purpose. And, you know, I uh, talking about family, my dad told me always when I said, oh, social media is this and that and there's comments. And he said, it's a tool. You can use a fork to stick somebody in, 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 into somebody or to eat. Right. So you, right. Use, right. Right? so you yeah. use it as for whatever purposes you're having it, that as a tool. Right. So that's pretty much the way about it. And I'm sure a lot of people who are listening and you mentioned your daughters, is there a way to um, limit the word uh, kind of from the beginning to teach them what social media is and so they understand not to put a lot of trust into it? Yeah, this is great. And it's a challenge because we, we do what we see. Mm. <laughs> so if my daughters see me scrolling, they see their mom scrolling, what that's okay we're gonna limit that but what's the conversation around that mm -hmm. such as the conversation around hey instead of can you believe what's happening you know and they hear us gossiping or showing our own fear then they'll do the same mm. but if we can say hey i connected with my buddy john I haven't seen him in over two decades this is really and here we're using it in a positive manner. So it's not what we say, it's what they see. We're influenced more by our environment and what we see than what we're told. Mm. Another key. Leading by example. Lead by example. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's amazing. And talking about being an example, and you said you use social media for building a community, and a lot of people 
misunderstands, and I agree, they skip the word social from social media and use it as a, you know, kind of loudspeaker to just tell whatever they want to tell. Um, are there any things that you as a professional see others do when they use any sales techniques or try to get customers or leads um, that they do wrong, that they actually end up hurting themselves rather than helping? Anything that strikes your eye? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things they do is assume that everybody understands and has the same viewpoint they do. Mm, golden, yes. It is, it, is so, it is so important to realize if you have a product or service, there are people who need it, but their map of reality is going to be different than yours. Mm -hmm. And that's so important. If, uh, I live in Wilmington here in North Carolina. If you came to Wilmington, you would see Wilmington different than I see it because I live here. You I would've... graduated in North Carolina. Oh, did you? Oh, did you? Where yes. else? In Asheville. <laughs> in Asheville. I love Asheville. I was there a couple of weeks ago. But if you were in, so let's look at Asheville. When I go to Asheville, I see it different than somebody that lives there or goes to school there because right. they're a map of reality. So back to sales, though. Uh, I was helping a gentleman this week, and he said, hey, the number one thing to sales, he's new, and he was, I was getting on my advice. He said, is just save people money. Everybody just wants to save money. That's all that matters. And I said, According to whom? Why do you feel that way? I don't, I mean, there's things I want to save money on. Mm -hmm. but there's also things I buy that I don't really? want the cheapest. I don't want the fake, I'm, I'm going to sound terrible. I don't want the fake iPhone. I don't want the fake ear pods. I want the best because right. I don't need trouble. I don't have time with it. Um, if somebody said, hey, Wayne, we can save you money on your cable bill or satellite or whatever, I don't want to save money on that. I just want it to work when I need it. So I think coming in with our own preconceived notions. Another problem inside of sales today is we're reading books, we're studying courses from people that maybe it worked 20 years ago. Mm, yes. But people mm -hmm. have heard it. People have heard this, especially with social media, everybody's selling something. So you've got to get beyond the noise. Mm -hmm. You've got to be unique and you got to find your path. The biggest key to sales, in my opinion, is getting the other person to recognize that they want it, not that you want to sell it to them. Right. And I think also understanding, uh, even asking, what do people need, right? It is so true. And I've seen so many people kind of assuming that we even understand what their product is. Meanwhile, we don't know. We still don't know. There was yeah. a lot of flashy commercials, a lot of wonderful outfits, but I still don't know what you're selling. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think this, you're very true. And what you have to recognize, every business owner, you need to have a very clear offer and recognize only certain people are going to need it. You can add other offers and so forth, but you're right. What am I offering? Is it very clear? And am I an easy person to communicate with? So we offer neuro persuasion. We offer sales and persuasion coaching. That's pretty clear cut if you're in sales and persuasion. Um, so people need to be real clear in their offers. I think we got into this. Um, then there's a difference, obviously, in marketing and, and branding and selling, but it can work in unison. If right. when my daughters, let's go back to my daughters. If now, if you hear a house full of girls scream and yell and laugh, it's because they heard the ice cream truck. That little man has figured our neighborhood out. <laughs> uh, the ice cream truck from two blocks away. And it got to the point, they don't even say, Daddy, can we have some ice cream? It's, <laughs> Ice cream truck. Do, 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 do. They run down the steps and they're out the door. Daddy, come on, come on. It's assumed because I programmed them to buy it, to, to, to want it. But the key is a clear offer, a clear sound. And then, but sales is really going beyond. You have to lower resistance. Let me give this one tip. If you come in with a hard sales pitch, you come in and you build up resistance. But if you'll come in and just see if you can help them. Mm -hmm. The right questions, the right phrases keeps resistance low. And suddenly they become attracted to you and they become attracted to your offering. And now it's a win-win for everybody. 
Amazing. Yes. And this this example is so golden, really. And regardless where you are, here in New York, in North Carolina, everywhere, we know that sound. That weird <laughs> sound machine. I don't know, the car. Creepy sound. In the <laughs> yeah, it's kind of creepy sound, but we recognize it, you know, in sleep. And it just immediately, you know, convinces you to make that purchase or to, you know, force others to do it for you. That's right. That's right. So that's so amazing. And, you know, um, to kind of um round it up i know you're super busy but um you as a professional you go on social media perhaps you see different websites people are asking you to be on your podcast and everywhere what do you see um in others in those people who you know are going to make so what are the attributes someone should have or should work on in order to make it as a business owner entrepreneur flexibility of behavior and resilience. Now let me let me let me flip those. Resilience number one. Uh, you will fail in most cases. Most people fail many times, and it's and it's kind of cliche. But is it a failure or feedback? If I look at it as feedback, this didn't work. Why didn't this work? A number of years ago, I put together a great program, a great program in my opinion to help people through relationships. This was back when I was doing more Christian counseling and more temperament therapy. And I built a sales funnel, a web page, had everything built out, and I enrolled one person. And I realized the marketing wasn't right. So I had to be resilient. I couldn't say, well, people just don't care. No, it's not their fault, it was my fault. Mm -hmm. if miscommunication, you always have to take responsibility for miscommunication. You need to learn how to communicate better. So I had to change that. So resilience. If you fail, you get up again. If the podcast flops, you do another podcast. If the sales, if they run you out, that's okay. You go back and you knock on the door again. But you do not come back with the same. You learn resilience. And this is also what I, the second thing, flexibility of behavior. That doesn't mean that you are wishy-washy. It means you have a core outcome, a definite outcome. But your behavior is flexible and how you get there. If I left Wilmington and said, I'm going to go to New York, there's many options. There's planes, there's cars, there's trains, hitchhiking, whatever. Mm -hmm. I can get there. But am I going to go straight? Am I going to deviate? Am I going to stop at D.C.? So there's many different flexibility behavior based on that person. So if somebody will be resilient, wake up every morning going, today is my day. Today I will learn, today I will grow. And what do I need to do? What skill sets don't I have? Because it really is mindset, which is why I start with gratitude, is skill set, knowing that you have the skills to help somebody make decisions or help somebody in your business. It's the effort. You've got to be, have the effort. You've got to be able to get up, get out of that bed and make it work. And then finally, I believe, and this is you know, my, a lot of people teach mindset, skill set, and effort. I believe the fourth level is favor or faith. But I don't really think you can activate the faith, that supernatural metaphysical realm, until you have been responsible for the first three. Then I believe the fourth is the overflow. So if I see somebody think they're going to make it, it's because I see resilience, I see passion. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King. Everybody knows Martin Luther King's speech, I have a dream, I have a dream. But if you really listen to it, if you really watch his body language, I think the dream had him, and that's why he accomplished what he accomplished. I don't think he had a dream. I think the dream had him. And you, he, he was driven. And you've got to be driven, and I think that's the key when I see somebody that will make it or not make it, resilience and willing to learn. Mm, that's beautiful and that's why the dream is still alive that's why we're watching the speeches and that's why you don't need to kind of rejuvenate content so the new um demographic or the new uh you know folks who are 10 and 13 will actually get to know him that's right that's a figure so the dream keeps on living yes exactly right yep thank you so much this was incredible awesome. honestly when we just started and i said you get us but now you got me and i feel like we <laughs> uh i learned a lot so you help uh, entrepreneurs or professionals of any kind to understand how they can connect with others um build a community ultimately sell build their businesses so how can they reach you how can they contact you can they book a session with you perhaps <laughs> 
Absolutely. Yourpersuasioncoach.com is our one-stop portal, I guess you would say. You can go and look at our blog, our articles, our podcast there. There is a button there that says, hey, book a call. Uh, I, t- I take all of those calls. I do not have a sales team. We, back to being an influencer, um, we only work with a handful of people at any one given time because I really want to know, as you said, I want to know them. I'm not worried about having 500,000 followers. I want to work with a handful of people that I can say, when you say this, this is what emotion you're causing. And this is what you're doing inside the other person's body. So let's shift that language. So we always begin with us influencing ourselves. Then we get into how to use hypnotic language, how to use metaphorical stories, how to use questions that are proven on, you know, in neuroscience to actually create shifts in people's minds so that you can lead them. So yeah, per yourpersuasioncoach.com. I'd love to hop on the phone with anyone. We work a lot with salespeople, real estate agents, et cetera, um, online marketers. It's all of, if you want to persuade someone to be, if you want to persuade yourself to be better and persuade other people to follow you or spend more money with you, and that's the key of sales is, is building a, a profitable business, then that's what I'd love to talk to people about. Amazing. So everybody who missed a little information, whether you're listening or you're watching, go into the notes and there you're going to see uh, Wayne's Instagram and social media and uh, of course the website and your podcast. Your podcast is amazing. So guys, please subscribe. And what I always encourage everybody, you need to comment, you need to like, you need to share, you need to put those five stars because that's our oxygen. Then we see feedback, right? That's right. We need that. The algorithm needs it. And we need that dopamine hit. So, <laughs> see, yes. Let us drop. Let us drip that dopamine. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Wayne, thank you so much. Godspeed to your company, to everything you thank do, you. and uh, God bless you and your family. It's you sound like uh, a truly amazing person, an amazing family that you have. So I can't wait for a follow up. I know it's our first conversation. Sure, not the last one. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon back. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. This was an incredible episode, isn't it? So if you feel like you want to learn something more, please connect to Wayne Sutton. Please go to yourpersuasioncoach.com, book a session and apply all the knowledge to your business and your life. This was our first conversation and for sure not the last. I wish Wayne Sutton and his team all the super best and I wish you to learn something new every day, same as you did today. Have a good one and see you back on Honest Conversations.